All right, so today's video is going to be on stop motion. If you have followed me on my social media channels, you will see that I had been playing around with this filming technique for a little while now. Now, today's video is going to be in going into depth on how to create this little guy. And if you want to see more sort of styles of stop motion, then check out Daniel Schiffer's recent video on Cheerios um, and you will see another application of this technique. Starting out for stop motion it's very very simple, it is you take a picture of an object, you move that object slightly, you take a picture of that object, move that object slightly, or in the case of Daniel Schiffer's video, you take a picture of the object, you add another one, you take a picture of the object, you add another one, and then once you've got that full image sequence you put it into your editing software of choice and it plays back as if moving of its own volition. So first and foremost, what you will need is a camera. This can be a phone, a simple point and shoot, or a DSLR, or a webcam. There is many softwares out there that you can use that feature onion skinning, which shows the frame previous so that you get the perfect movement each time. For creating this guy, we first set up a green screen because I wanted to put it into a live action scene. So going into the setup that we have here, we have a green card mounted on a thicker piece of foam core board. We have a poker table, like a plate cards playing table, felted in that same sort of green. And then we have two key lights, one to kind of neutralize the background so that there's no shadow cast on it and then the other for the character itself. Now stop motion with plasticine is kind of difficult, has some pitfalls, as you need to heat up the plasticine to be able to make it malleable and keep it malleable for that time. With my DSLR, I was using a remote shutter, therefore it eliminates the shake that you could get with the likes of an iPhone or if you were pressing the button yourself and makes for a much smoother integration in post. So once After Effects is opened for you, you'll want to open a new composition, which is by this button down here. I've already opened one called Tutorial. Just for the sake of this, I will show you the composition settings. And currently it's set at frame rate of eight frames per second. Generally, for animation and stop motion, it'll be between 12 or 24 frames, depending on the look that you're going for. In this case, it was 12 frames per second, so hit OK on that. You'll then want to import your footage and images. You don't have to go through a long way of doing this. Double click it, select the first image in your series of photos. Once you're into the file explorer, click the first image in your sequence of images. And if you don't have it selected already as default, click the importer JPEG sequence, then click import. Because I deleted a couple of frames, um, not ones that were needed, it came up with this prompt, just hit OK. and. The animation is here. Now you'll have noticed it came up with a broken media source for certain frames. It populates it with this image because you have a wrong sequence in there. Um, as I said, I deleted a couple of frames. It's from here, Control Shift D on Windows, Command Shift D on Mac, and then to the end of that and then you can delete it out. Click and drag it across and you will see that it plays through no issue, like so. Um, with this one you'll notice that I used a stand to hold it up. Um, on this, it's not so much of a big issue because you can rotoscope out um, and it's going to be green screened anyways. So once you've got it into your footage, if you have a background like 
I do. Once you've got that in, you've got this here, just a standard movement camera. I've already done this once before, so I know that track motion is the way forwards, and I want to track rotation as well. Drag that to the end of the pencil as this shows a good amount of parallax and then you want to track forward and now that that's done tracking you can go up to layer new null object and then select it in the edit target button highlight it ok and then apply that it will ask the apply dimensions x and y hit ok and there you have it. Now we can hide this as we don't need it in the viewer and then we want to bring in our image sequence composition. Place that above and resize as. Once you've got it here we'll make a rough garbage mat as, and then go into your effects panel and search for key light. This is a really strong contender for doing green screen keying and really well built into After Effects. You want to select the majority green colour and then you want to change your gain ever so slightly and screen balance so that you don't cut out too much of your character. To further refine, go into the rollback and you can further refine the overall softness of that mask. So as you'll see, got that here. We could probably get away with reducing our garbage mat a little bit more as it doesn't particularly move too much and there we have it sorted there. Now you'll see that we've got a lot of movement over here. Go into key cleaner, drop that in and then bump up the contrast a little bit reduce the chatter and so now you've got that there the last thing you need to do to see it into the image and this is where there may be a little issue is pick whip it to your null object and all going well it should move with the camera so once you've done that, to better see it in the image, you want to pre-compose your image sequence layer, move all attributes into new composition, hit OK. So this part was trial and error initially for me, I forgot how to do it. What you want to do is duplicate the image sequence layer, drop it below your main layer, rename it shadow layer and then after this point you don't want to pay attention to what's on the screen, just pay attention to what I'm telling you here and you want to increase the shadow layer height in the viewer horizontally so it stretches out that image. You then want to apply lumetri colour, drop the shadows, whites and blacks all the way down and drop the saturation down and then you want to apply a Gaussian blur on top of that, crank it up to what the lighting in your scene requires and then further analyse that and adjust the opacity accordingly. So hopefully you've found this informative, this is how you would do the post production on stop motion animation for dropping into live action plates. Um, if you are interested in any other tutorials that I have on the go, there is a playlist up on the screen just now. And until next time guys, keep it real, hunt that thrill.
peace.